Hi YouTube, it's Autumn Beckman. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. First, can we just marvel at this shirt? Look at the sleeves on this thing. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my God. The boyfriend, I walked out with this on and he laughed at me. He thought I looked like, uh, like a, a flower child. But um, I, whether it looks like that or not, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And guess what I paid for it and where I got it? 20 bucks at Marshall's. What? So yes, I love this. My new favorite shirt in this color. This is my color for fall. I love mustard yellow. I love it. And so this was just the perfect thing. I saw it and I had to have it and it fit. You know, most things I try them on and they don't fit me very well. So it was meant to be. All right, this week, that was a, a good start to the week. And I had one other thing that was an excellent start to the week. And then my week took a big dive. Um, and then I came back up today. So, uh, all right. So on Monday, I think it was, let me think here. I think so. I had, yeah, it was Monday. Okay. So on Monday, I left work and I was going to go to a local shopping center and I turned um, to drive through this very busy intersection and there were a lot of cars when I turned onto the next street there were a lot of cars stopped in both lanes and I didn't see any reason for them to be stopped so I was confused about that and I get I'm one of those people it's and I'm, I'm an impatient driver so I'm like why are they stopped and blah blah go people and so I saw this truck that was about to, it looked like it was about to turn into a parking lot, but it was only in the right lane. So I didn't know why the people in the left lane were stopped. And then I saw it, there was a dog off leash and it was a boxer. And I guess they were, well, they were, they were stopped for the dog so that nobody would hit it if it ran out in the street. So there was some lady trying to catch the dog and I don't know if it was a stray at this point or if it was her dog or what it was. Um, seemed maybe like it was her dog um, or a stranger stopping to pick up a stray. I don't know, I couldn't tell at that point. So she was kind of crouched down and she had her hands out and the dog was thinking about coming up to her and it walked up to her and it got close enough to touch her hand. And then as soon as it did that, it ran off out into traffic right in front of all the cars that stopped. Now I'm in the left lane and somehow, I guess some other cars had gone when I was busy watching the dog and should have been driving, but you know, both. And so somehow I was the first car, I think, in the left lane of traffic at this point. And the dog runs right in front of my car and comes around and stops right at my driver's door. So of course it stops with me, right? It knows that I love dogs, right? That must be it. So I opened my door a little bit thinking this dog, uh oh, Vincent's chewing on stuff. Hey, hey, hey. You are not supposed to be out chewing on Paul's things. Go back to your house, and now I have to close your door because you were being bad. Sorry, Vincent. Whew. So right before filming this, I filmed the video with Vincent that should already be up by now. So now she's she's still kind of frustrated from being on my shoulder for so long. And I didn't even notice that she crawled across the floor and got onto the ottoman and started chewing on a bookmark that Paul has on one of his books. So luckily she wasn't chewing on the book itself. So anyway, the dog stops and I start to open my door because I want to try to catch it if I can. And um, I'm thinking that it's going to run off because if it's not going right up to its person, then it's kind of skittish and you know, I, I'm, but I'm going to try, right? So I opened my door a little bit and I, I was stuck my hand out. I was like, hi. And it came and snuck my, sn snuck my hand. It came and sniffed my hand and it just stood there next to my car. So I put my car in park. I left it running, but I put it in park and I started to get out of my car and I'm watching it thinking it's going to run off at any second. And it didn't, I got out of my car and I was able to pet it. It didn't have a collar on. Turns out it had gotten out of its collar. That's what happened. So, um, I didn't have anything to grab onto and there was, it was a big boxer and their skin is kind of tight. They don't have a lot of extra skin where you can grab the scruff of their neck. But, um, she just stood there and she was very friendly. So I just wrapped my arms around her cautiously cause um, she's a dog. I don't know. I don't know if she's going to turn and bite me, but, um, I carefully wrapped my arms around her and I picked her up and I kind of lifted her up to show 
the other lady that was trying to get her that I had her. And then there was a guy in a giant truck behind me. So he got out of his truck and came over to open the back of my car so I could put her in my car to get her out of the street and have her in a contained environment. And then before I knew it, the owner came up with the collar and leash and put it on her. Um, so I got to save a dog, yay! That was really fun. That, that meant a lot to me because about a month ago, and I saw I did a video on this, you may have seen, with Hurricane Harvey, there's a rescue, um, Harvey Dog Rescue Best Friends out of Utah has set up a place here in Houston called the Pet Pavilion, with Pet Reunion Pavilion where they got all these dogs that were rescued from the storm and they're trying to find the owners. And I went there the first weekend that they were open and helped photograph the dogs for their website to get them up and get them some exposure. And uh, I didn't really get to take pictures that day for the website because there was another lady who was there from San Antonio and they only had about uh, half a dozen dogs that needed to be photographed. So I let her do that because she had driven all that way in. I wanted her to have something meaningful to do. And I knew that I lived 10 minutes from this place so I could come back any time. Um, so what I did was I signed up for every Saturday because, you know, I have work during the week. So I signed up to volunteer there for every Saturday through the end of this month, October. And then my back went out and I wasn't able to go and help because I either wouldn't have been able to do the work or my back was still tender enough that if a dog pulled me hard enough that it would throw my back out again. So I think it's been the last three weeks in a row I've had to cancel with them and it's really been eating at me because I really wanted to be there helping with that and I just haven't physically been able to. So today is Saturday and today was the first Saturday that I was able to go over and help and I'm so glad that I could and I'm skipping ahead a little here so let me come back to that. Um, okay, so Monday that happened. On Tuesday, you know I'm a teacher. On Tuesday, a student came up to me to ask a question. I'm sitting at my desk, they come up, and I was like, yes, and as I turned, and as soon as I turned and said yes, um, the poor child threw up all over my classroom. So, I mean, totally not her fault. I was not upset with her at all. I'm, I'm not saying this to, like, to make fun of her or anything like that, because it's embarrassing enough. If that ever happened to me, I'd be so embarrassed. Um, but, you know, obviously she couldn't help it. So, and, and all the other students in the class, I was really impressed with them. They were so nice. I expected that there'd be kids that would make rude comments and stuff, but they didn't at all. They were so nice about it. They just, they just ignored it like it didn't even happen and kept about their business and didn't draw any attention to her, which is so nice. So she went to the nurse, she went home, and I sent a student to get the custodian to clean it up. Um, unfortunately, some of it got on my personal things, and uh, so I had to deal with cleaning that up, and that was a little bit of a mess, but um, not much, not much. She kind of turned and didn't get a whole lot on my stuff, but there was some there, and like on, a, um, I had this rolling cart that I take to work, and a little got on that, and it was unzipped, so some got down inside of it, and I had to go in there and clean that off. It got on some of my agendas, and uh, so, unfortunately, but all salvageable, cleanable, totally fine, Clorox wipes, good to go, it's all good now. So that happened, that was Tuesday. Now Wednesday, this is the worst thing that happened. And let me say this too, I meant to say this at the beginning. So I titled this My Week From Hell. I just wanna say a little disclaimer. I know people go through much, much, much worse things on a daily basis if you're dealing with some kind of illness or uh, whatever that you know lifestyle you're in a war zone whatever it is I mean the stuff that I went through this week is nothing compared to all that but bad for my life so Wednesday we had a faculty meeting after work it didn't last very long um, that was good usually they're a lot longer than this one was so I leave that I turn out of the parking lot of the school I go down this side street there I get to the stop sign and there had been a bus traveling next to me. It was a little limo bus traveling next to me the whole time. I was in the right lane the whole time. They were in the left lane the whole time. So I'm just coming up to a stop at the stop sign. I'm about to turn right. And this bus suddenly turns right in front of me and 
didn't see me, I guess, and hit my car and scraped my car, and I'm laying on my horn honking at it. As soon as I see a bus coming toward me, I start laying on my horn, and then especially after she hit me, I'm really laying on it, and some people behind me were also honking. Didn't stop her, unfortunately. She still hit my car and scraped it up. Um, sorry about Vincent. She's still riled up from the video, I guess, or that's just normal for her. You'll hear her all the time. So, yeah, so the bus driver got out and she started blaming it on me and saying it was my fault that she has to make a wide turn and I should know that and should have been paying attention. Um, no. So this is a street where bu school buses, like dozens of school buses a day, go down the street and turn right from the right lane. They don't get in the left lane. They don't make wide turns. This bus was like half the size of a school bus. She could easily have done that from the right lane. Plus, the left lane that she was in was a left turn only lane, so it was illegal to make a right turn from there. Also, she gave absolutely no indication that she was turning right. She didn't have her blinker on. She wasn't scooting over into my lane until after she'd already stopped and was about to turn. So it was totally her fault, and now I get the pleasure of dealing with an insurance company and having to go fix my car. That's the worst thing. I mean, there, there are no injuries, and she had a bunch of kids on the bus too. So, I mean, this wasn't like a bang kind of crash. This was a scrape. So there was no, um, like, like the, an impact that would cause injury. There was nothing like that, thank goodness. But what a hassle. And because she was blaming me, I called the police to come do a report. And it took them, you know, it's rush hour. It's right after work. So it took them three hours to get there. So we got to sit there for three hours. And then this poor lady... Um, I, I was very upset when she started blaming me and I was in shock from the accident and when I was sitting in my car and the bus was right there, I'm trapped in my car and that was frightening and it like didn't occur to me right away that I could climb over and get out the passenger side. I felt like I was trapped in my car and so that was, um, what's the word? It, it was disturbing somehow. Um, so I finally did climb out and we got to talking. And when she blamed me, I was kind of yelling back at her. She was also on her phone with her supervisor. She'd already called them to tell them about the accident. And so part of the reason I'm yelling is so they can hear my side because she's telling them her side. And, and then she's like telling them, oh yeah, that's the other lady yelling. And I'm like, yeah, because you're lying to your boss and I want him to know the truth. Um, so that happened and I get to deal with that now. So... Oh, and then it didn't even stop there. So the officer, well, the officer was about to show up. A few minutes before that happened, she came up to the car and said, can we just settle this? She's like, I've been driving 19 years. The officer's not going to show up. They're busy. They're doing other things. This is not a priority for them. And at that point, we'd been there three hours, and I had just gotten a call back from dispatch saying that the officer would still be a while. So I was like, okay, I don't know when they're going to show up. I don't want to sit here for three more hours. So let's just exchange information and be on our way. And at this point, we're being very nice and civil to each other, and it's all fine. So she goes back to her vehicle to get her insurance paper and come back. And she walked back up, and she's like, you'll never guess what I just did. And I said, what? She said, I locked myself out of my car. Oh. So then we had to wait for the officer. Luckily, he was only about 10 minutes more after that. And then he called a wrecker to get into her car to get her insurance papers out. And he couldn't get into the car, so he had to call another wrecker. So it was this never-ending story. And then our officer, we got to talking to him, and he was so interesting. He was a refugee from the Cambodian War, and he had also been a Buddhist monk. So he was this very interesting guy, and he was telling us about um, how he was impacted by Harvey and how his station, which is in downtown Houston, is totally flooded. They don't know when it's going to open again. They're in some other building and all this stuff and the courthouses and all are flooded down there. The jury room, which is underground and pretty much brand new, totally flooded and destroyed. So he was telling us about that. He was telling us about this car chase that he was involved in the other night and all these things. So it was very interesting to talk to him. It was all very civil at that point and friendly and we exchanged information and all that stuff. So that happened. And the biggest 
you know, the biggest frustration is just the hassle of dealing with the insurance companies and, and having to go take your car in for repair and get a rental car and just, you know, you've probably been through it. Most people have, right? So you know what a hassle it is. Um, and then what happened? Let's see, Thursday, um, nothing really happened. And then Friday, nothing really happened, right? Yeah. So today, that brings me today, I got to finally go volunteer with the dogs. So over the course of the last month, when they've had all these dogs, they had three to 500 dogs at this facility. So they had an outbreak of distemper. So what they ended up doing was dividing the dogs into three different groups in the building. They had the red group that had distemper, the yellow group that had symptoms but weren't diagnosed, and then the green group that didn't have any symptoms. So the other day they moved the red group, the distemper dogs, off-site to a new location. And so now they just have the yellow and green dogs, which appear to be clear. And then they have a few other things. They started out with, I'm going to guess, about 50 cats. They only have four cats left. They still have 200 dogs at this facility. But now they have a new issue, which is ringworms. So they have a separate section in the building that has the ringworm positive dogs. And that's where I volunteered to work today. So they, they don't just put you in there, they ask you, you know, is anybody willing to work in that area? I said, I am. Um, so we went in there and they ex we had to go through this whole big procedure about cross-contamination. They had gowns we had to wear and uh, gloves and booties. And between each dog that you interacted with or each kennel that you interacted with, you had to change your whole outfit. They were running out of the uh, dressing gowns, so you kept that one on unless you worked, unless it got ripped or wet, or you worked with a dog that had, I think it's called Giardia, which I didn't know what that was. The boyfriend was just explaining that some kind of bacteria in water and that that is the whole genesis of why we have um, filtered bottled water now. Okay. Okay, Vincent liked that. She, she said that's an acceptable answer. All right, so. Um, so I worked there and you had to change your dressings and everything and I dressings you had to change your outfit um, So I started off cleaning kennels So other volunteers would take the dogs out and take them out to walk and use the bathroom and then while they're gone You go in and you clean the kennel you pull everything out of it scrub it down You mop the floor and then you put everything back in and give them fresh water so I did that for about two hours and then for the last hour or two I walked a few of the dogs who I'd like switched places so that somebody else would clean and I would get to walk the dogs and interact with them. And I'll put some pictures in here. Um, this dog is named uh, Biscuit and she was one that I got to walk and she was so sweet. Um, really cute little thing and she, she was funny because she was Play, like she was a little scared at first. She didn't want to come out of her kennel So I had to pick her up and carry her and she's one of the dogs that had Giardia So uh, I didn't worry about picking her up and carrying her because I knew I was gonna to have to change my gown anyway um, after being with her So I carried her out of the little area where the round worm dogs were and by the way They were calling that the fungal jungle, which is really cute um so we walked outside and, and did our business and stuff and when she was done she turned around and was kind of jumping on me and playing and she was sort of nipping playfully like chewing on my hand or my arm or stuff and i was trying to get her to stop that none of these dogs by the way are leash trained so i don't know if they're all street dogs i would think most of them are street dogs because houston has a really bad pet overpopulation problem but Anyway, so that's what I did this morning. I finally, finally got to work with them. I plan to be back next Saturday to work with them again. Unfortunately, I can't be there every day because I have to work and I have other responsibilities and I have YouTube films to shoot on the weekend also. So I can't um, just drop everything and do that. All right, that's it. That was my week from hell. I guess it wasn't all, all that bad. The, the car crash was the big thing. The That was just, ugh. I was actually shaking for a while there. Two of the teachers um, ha stopped. One of them was right behind me, so she can be a witness if I need one, but uh, two of the teachers stopped and came up and hung out with me a little bit to make sure I was okay, um, which is really nice about, of them. And that's it for now, guys. 
So thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. My videos are usually about handbags. Let me show you the handbag that I was carrying all week. This was my bag, the Speedy 30 and Damir Aben. And I have an Hermes scarf wrapped around it. I have the Facetti's uh, bag charm keychain thing from Louis Vuitton. I have the strap from my Trevi GM and I have a luggage tag with my initials stamped on it that I purchased from Louis Vuitton. So I know that one's real, not like that other one that wasn't in the other video, you know what I'm talking about. So that's it. Like, subscribe, click the bell notification icon and have a wonderful day. Have a much more wonderful day and week than I had. Bye guys.